Our film critic here in the Keys, Cheryl Rhodes, is back on the show with us this morning. Now, if you remember the last time he was on the show, he actually talked with us about what they say is the worst movie ever made. This morning, though, he's going to talk with us about the most epic film of all time. It will actually be celebrating its 50th anniversary this week. Cheryl, thank you for being back on the show today. Oh, well, thank you, Jenna. It's always fun to come talk about movies with you. Well, it's great learning about movies from you. Let's talk this morning about Lawrence of Arabia. Yes, Lawrence of Arabia uh, was filmed in 1962, so it's celebrating its 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a special showing of it Thursday night at the Regal Theater here in, in Key West. And uh, it's, it's really a film that everyone should see because of its scope and beauty, and also it, it's just so darn good. Uh, the film won 10 Academy Awards. Uh, it would have won 11, they say, if somebody hadn't forgotten to send in the uh, nomination for the costume designer. Uh, it was picked by the American Film Institute as the greatest epic film ever. Mm -hmm. It was picked by the American Film Institute as the seventh greatest movie of all time. Mm -hmm. And Peter O'Toole, the star of the movie, uh, was picked by both Premier Magazine and Entertainment Weekly as giving the greatest performance of all time. Wow. So it's quite a movie. Yeah, so it's won so many awards. And now when was the first time that you saw it, Cheryl? Oh my goodness, I didn't see it until I was an adult because I always had an aversion to epic movies. They're so long. Uh, uh, Alfred Hitchcock said a movie shouldn't be longer than the bladder of the audience. <laughs> and uh, fortunately they have divided this movie into two parts. There's an intermission, part mm -hmm. one and part two. So you can get up and go to the restroom. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is over three hours long. It's about three and a half hours long. Long. Oh, very long. And when it was first released, it was 222 minutes long, which makes it one minute longer than Gone with the Wind. So it is the longest Academy Award winning movie ever. Wow. Now, what makes it so good, Cheryl? What would you say are the key parts to it? Well, it is, first of all, beautifully cinematography, beautiful cinematography, they, they, the desert landscapes, the, uh, the performances, the scope of the movie, it's just, it's just magnificent. Uh, uh, when you see Peter O'Toole's blue eyes there against the desert background, women swoon and even men feel a little more brave and hairy chested. <laughs> uh, the film is based on the life of T.E. Lawrence, mm -hmm. that's where you get the name Lawrence of Arabia. He was a British Army officer who during World War I was sent to Arabia to, to, uh, to liaison with the uh, Arab National Council. Mm -hmm. And he actually kind of became a leader of them, and he led them on battles and, uh, and sort of assimilated himself into the Arab culture. It, it's, a, it's a strange movie in that sense, in that uh, uh, there's not a single woman speaking part in the whole movie, not one single word. They're really, it's all? All, all men, men, men dialogue. There are a few women shown in the background, mm -hmm. uh, but most of those are Christian women wearing robes because the uh, Muslim culture would not allow the, the, uh, the local women to be photographed, so they had to kind of fake those, but none of them have a word to say. W but what is the part to that, to not have females speaking? Well, it's you? a real man's man's movie. Right. <laughs> it is like a man's it. story. It's about mm -hmm. war, uh, mm -hmm. about desert war and about that. And uh, it was uh, directed by uh, David Lean, uh, who won an Academy Award for it, and uh, it was produced by Sam Spiegel. Uh, they had worked together on Bridge on the River Kwai, which won all kind of awards, so they were eager to work together again. Originally, they were going to cast Marlon Brando to star as Lawrence, mm -hmm. but Brando turned it down saying he didn't want to spend two years on the back of a camel. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then they tried to hire Albert Finney, who was unknown at the time, but just about to become famous. Mm -hmm. They offered him the role, but he turned it down because he didn't want to sign the required seven-year contract. Mm -hmm. Catherine Hepburn recommended Peter O'Toole. Uh, they hired him, and he did sign the seven-year contract. Mm -hmm. and the rest is history. Uh, did they make the right choice, Cheryl? Oh, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else could play it. Uh, in some ways, O'Toole looks a little bit like Lawrence, uh, other than the fact that he's nine inches taller than the real Lawrence. Uh, Peter O'Toole is 6'2", 6'3", very tall guy, mm -hmm. and Lawrence was a little shorter. Uh, but it was a great, a great performance, and they took great pains to make all of the character actors, all the supporting actors, look like the real deal. Uh, in fact, uh, when uh, uh, Alec Guinness was playing King of, of, of Faisal, uh, he uh, uh, dressed up and was made up to look so much like him that people who knew the real, the real prince at the time mm -hmm. uh, mistook him for the real guy. Really? And so they uh, did a good job. They creating. did a great job. And Anthony Quinn liked to put on his own makeup, and he showed up on the first day wearing Arab gear, mm -hmm. and everybody thought that he looked so authentic 
that the uh, uh, the director uh, uh, called the producer and said, uh, uh, let, let him know that we're replacing him with a native guy. Wow. <laughs> so now overall, Cheryl, what do you give this movie? Like, do you think it's worth seeing on Thursday? Do you oh, give it an absolutely. A plus? I give it an A plus. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a wonderful epic film. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's just, uh, it was filmed uh, with the help of, uh, of King Hussein of Jordan. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, he lent them a whole uh, a brigade of soldiers. So all the soldiers you see in the movie are played by real soldiers. And uh, uh, he actually, the king actually met his second wife on the set. She was a mm -hmm. switchboard operator, a British switchboard operator, and he met her and married her. So there's and, romance. And it was. And their son mm -hmm. is, uh, became the second uh, uh, king of, of Jordan there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had to go 150 miles to get water for the set. Uh, at the nearest well, and they used plastic cups to drink until it ruined so many scenes, the cups blowing in the wind across the desert, that they replaced them with porcelain cups. That's good. They should have just stuck with the porcelain from the beginning. <laughs> well, I said there were no women, women voices in the mm -hmm. movie. Uh, the, the joke is that there was only woman, one woman in the movie, Gladys the Camel, that mm -hmm. uh, Peter O'Toole rolled, uh, rode. And, uh, uh, she actually saved his life. He was in a, in a, in a scene where he fell off the camel, mm -hmm. and there were stampeding horses coming his way, and the camel stood over him and protected him from the horses. And that actually happened to the real Lawrence of Arabia uh, early on, and mm -hmm. so history kind of repeated itself. This movie just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> and again, people can check it out this Thursday at the Regal. That's true. Well, okay. uh, O'Toole hated camels. He, didn't, mm -hmm. he was afraid to ride them, and so mm -hmm. for the big scene of Aqaba, the war scene, uh, he and Omar Sharif got uh, completely drunk, and he says he doesn't even remember filming the scene. <laughs> and uh, uh, he didn't like the way the saddle felt, so he put foam rubber on it to make it seat better. Mm -hmm. And you can see that from time to time in the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, it was a habit that was picked up, and still uh, uh, nomad tribes today over in some parts of, of the Arab countries have foam on their saddles that they got from Peter O'Toole. From that movie. Well, thank you, Cheryl, for being on the show this morning, sharing all this. Hopefully our viewers can check it out this Thursday. That's going to do it for me today, everyone. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Please join me again tomorrow at 7 a.m. and again at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day.